All right, guys, we are here with another edition of the Screen Team. I'm being joined by the main man himself, Sean. Just Sean. Just Sean. That's just, all That's all you need. Just Sean is here. And um, Sh- Sean... We've got uh, we've got a special show of movies uh, yes. for the folks today, um, and you wanted to do a theme. You're like, yeah. I, I want to do a theme. I'm a theme guy. Uh, let's uh, let's do um, video game movies. And I was like, uh, weirdy. Yeah, we already did that. We've done that before. Yeah. Uh, and then you're like, um, okay, let's do uh, musicals. And I was like, I'm not doing musicals with you, Sean. It's it's just not. I'm, I, I can't. No I can't respect do it. for the arts. I, I can't do it. So then you're like, all right, well. Um, how about spy movies? And I'm like, yes, yeah, spy movies, spy movies. It is. So you have chosen um, a comedy, mm-hmm. uh, which is Austin Powers International Man of Mystery, which was the first one in the in the yes. trilogy. Uh, you've chosen a dark comedy uh, directed by the Coen Brothers called Burn After Reading. Right? Dark comedy is a very apt way to describe that movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm talented <laughs> in my word structure. Right. Um, and the third movie is a. I don't know how to describe the film other than it's... Action comedy? Yeah, it's it's a very, very cool movie that mm-hmm. uh, just uh, came out a couple weeks ago in theaters uh, called The the Man from Uncle. Yes, which based is on a, a 60s television show. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got we've got spy movies for you oh, this, yeah. uh, this evening. So if you're into uh, uh, spy movies, this might be the show for you, all right? So uh, let's get right to it. First movie is Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. This film came out uh, back in 1990. Uh, when I was in high school and you were probably in grade oh, no, school, I was right? in middle school, yeah, when this movie came out. So did you see it in theaters? Not in theaters, but I did see it around the time when it came out on video and everything. So, so your mom your mom didn't take you to see this one? No, no, <laughs> no. It'd be a little awkward. A little bit. Um, but anyway, this is a film that was uh, written by Mike Myers. And from what I understand, um, you know, seeing interviews with him and stuff like that, this was kind of a, a tribute to his dad. Who, oh, really? who really loved the James Bond flicks mm-hmm. and he loved spy movies. And this movie was kind of like a nod to, to his dad and to, you know, to, to play a, a spy, yeah. you know, for his dad. And I, I don't think his dad got to see this movie, but uh, it was definitely special uh, for Michael Myers. That's why he, he wrote mm-hmm. the film. But you can see a lot of James Bond influences yeah. in this film, especially with Dr. Evil. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Evil was a, um, a kind of a, a portrayal of a, a James Bond uh, villain. Moonraker, I think, is who... Yeah, I think I, it was in a couple, actually. I think yeah. that villain was in a couple of, of James Bond, yeah. Bond films. But uh, um, out of all the spy movies to choose, why did you choose this one? Well, because I, ha- I knew that the other movies would have comedy bits, but maybe wouldn't be as focused on it. And I wanted something that was kind of satirizing the spy mm-hmm. genre. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kind of sending it up a little bit. And that's why I chose Austin Powers. I thought it'd be a fun movie. It'd be good to rewatch it. I haven't watched it in quite a while. How long? How long have it been? Oh, it's been a good decade. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in over 10 years. Okay. So I watched it so, here recently. So one of my first questions is, did it live up to how you felt about it when you first saw it? Yeah, it did. Because, I mean, it's, it is it is less a spy movie and more a spoof. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is the airplane of spy movies. Yeah. And it, it was still absolutely hilarious. I mean... You see a lot of the jokes coming, just having seen a lot of spoofs. You know where this is going, right. but they are still quite funny, especially with how he is interacting in the time displacement of being in the 60s, having to acclimate to then the 90s, right. and how things have changed. Yeah, and, because he was from the 60s. It was the sexual revolution yeah. and, you know, party on, basically, yeah. right? Not uh, so much in the nineties. Not so much in the nineties. His uh, his game is definitely um, a little a little yeah. weakened. Um, but uh, you've got Mike Myers. He plays uh, two parts in this film: mm-hmm. Austin Powers, which is our I guess our, our hero, hero, yeah, and uh, he plays Doctor Evil, which of is course, our yeah. our villain. Oh, so yeah. uh, he does a couple of roles, and then you've got Elizabeth Hurley, uh, who plays um, uh, basically um, kind of an, another agent, yeah, uh, who's helping the British. Uh, Spy agent. Yeah, she's uh, she's helping uh, Austin Powers uh, fight the 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 evilness that is <laughs> Doctor Evil, and you've got you've got just a great supporting cast. Seth oh. Green is in this. Mm-hmm. Um, Seth Green plays uh, Doctor Evil. Scott son. Evil. Yeah, <laughs> and there's just so there's so many good interactions between Doctor Evil and Scott. Oh, yeah. Right, it just him hushing him, and I like how they hint to some of the later movies, kind of reveals mm-hmm. with how. Um, I can't. The main female villain, I can't remember her name. 
in this in this yeah. particular one? Yeah, the kind of Doctor Evil's right hand woman. I don't think I can. A lot I, of a no, lot. no, 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 oh, not her, not her. Not her. The, oh, the oh, uh, Fra, Frau. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's German man. Yeah, the, the German lady who wouldn't wouldn't <laughs> let him kill Scott Evil, even <laughs> yeah. though he wanted to. Yeah, uh, and just their interactions were great. Robert Wagner was fantastic in this movie. Yeah. Uh, again, the a lot of who we won't finish. <laughs> yeah. I thought she she was real good yeah. for her part. Uh, Elizabeth Hurley was fantastic and uh, well acted, especially for what it was. Right. Um, one of the funniest scenes going back to the Dr. Evil, Scott, uh, yeah. evil, uh, you know, uh, companionship, uh, when they're, when they're ha- having father son therapy yeah. or whatever. And, um, you know, Scott's like, all he wants to do is he just wants to kill me. Yeah. And the therapist is like, who's played by Carrie Fisher. She's like, you mean he wants to kill you spiritually? Right. And, Dr. Evil's like, no, no, no I, no, I, I, really, no, I want to kill him. Yeah, <laughs> I want to yeah. kill him. And he's like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, so just, I mean, so many classic uh, scenes in this uh, Why particular movie. Why don't you just shoot him? We can go get my guns. We can shoot him right now. <laughs> and that makes fun of the, the spy oh, yeah. genre as well. Dr. Evil has Absolutely. awesome powers in his grasp, and he's like, no, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do evilly. And then, you this know. comically slow-moving apparatus. Just want some sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. <laughs> but they're endangered. But they're endangered, so we can't do that. We have the sea bass now. <laughs> yeah. Laser. Yeah. Um, so many good lines in this film, man. Very, very good. Uh, it's called Austin Powers International Man of Mystery. Like Sean says, it's a spoofy movie, kind of like in the vein of, uh, you know, your, uh, your airplane movies mm-hmm. or... Um, Naked Gun, you yeah, know, stuff absolutely. like that, but definitely uh, in the spy genre. So if you're into those kind of movies, definitely give it a go, man. Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Coming up after the break, we're going to review one of the Coen Brothers' film called Burn After Reading. That's next on Today's Talk 930 KWOC.